Who is better? Who is right? Man versus elf, the age-old conflict that defines the religions, cultures, and very races themselves. It is a conflict interwoven with the very nature and fabric of the universe. It is a division of spirits that occurred long before any written history, a time of the turbulent and primordial. Welcome to Fudge Muppet, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Scott, and today we are going to explore the ages-old conflict between the races of man and elf, a conflict that predates even their identities as such, a time when they were simply the Elnafei, a group of the Et'ada, the original spirits of the Orbis, who through creation became power-starved and were forced to resort to biological reproduction and a worldly existence. In fact, it could be argued that this conflict predates even this, a conflict that began with the very first cosmic forces of order and chaos. Below in the description, I will link various resources of ours covering topics such as the Complete Guide to Gods, Who Were the Elnafe, Dragon Breaks, Godhead, all that complex stuff. These should help you gain a better understanding of some of the more abstract Elder Scrolls concepts, but I will do my best here to give you a solid understanding as we go. The conflict arguably begins with the original cosmic forces, Anu and Padome. Anu is the cosmic force of order, stability, and stasis, whereas Padome is the cosmic force of chaos, unpredictability, and change. It is the interplay of these two forces that would lead to the creation of what I like to call pseudo-souls. In order to understand themselves better, they create themselves a pseudo-soul each. Anu creates Anoyel and Padome creates Sithis. Now, the reason I say pseudo soul is because they aren't exactly souls in the way we are familiar with them. They feel and behave far more like a cosmic force, but still have some semblance of self reflection and understanding. Regardless, another step had to be taken, and they each made themselves a new soul. Anoyel creates Oriel, and Sithis creates Lorcan. Now, in this same time, to make a very complex story short and simple, a lot of other spirits are born, called the Et'ara, which means original spirits, and they inhabit the planes of Oblivion and Aetherius. Just to make it clear, this is one of the many versions of Nern's creation story. Various cultures have different representations of the same entities and the same essential events, but regardless, this is the easiest sort of bare bones version. Now, before I go and move on to the conflict, it is important to understand that by the very natures of Oriel and Lorcan, Anoyel and Sithis, Anu and Padme, are that they are opposed. Order versus chaos, stasis versus change, fundamentally opposite forces. For future reference, there are two important definitions. Anuic refers to the philosophy, ideology, and cultural practices that reflect Anu's sphere of order, and Padomaic refers to the philosophies, ideologies, and cultural practices that reflect Padome's sphere of chaos. So Anuic and Padomaic, orderly and chaotic, static and changing. Just to reiterate here, chaos does not mean bad as it does in some other fictional universes, and order does not mean good. They are simply facts, cosmic forces, stasis and change. Stasis can be good or bad, change can be good or bad. There is no point in assigning moral characteristics to these forces. It would be like saying that heat is good and cold is bad. Anyways, let's move on. So Lorcan approaches the other Et'ata and proposes the creation of Mundus. Just for your knowledge, Lorcan is the elven name, also known as Shazar by the Needs slash Imperials, Shor by the Nords, Lorcaj by the Khajiit, Sep by the Red Guards, and Shior by the Bretons. Regardless of the name, they are all referring to the same core entity that we will continue to call Lorcan for ease. So a bunch of the other spirits, the Et'ada, join Lorcan on creating the realm of Mundus. But the creation of Mundus required the sacrifice of their power. One of the fundamental differences between elves and man in their beliefs is whether or not Lorcan tricked the other spirits. As a general rule, elves see Lorcan as a trickster god who betrayed the other spirits, not telling them that they would lose their power to creation until it was too late. Whereas men believe that the spirits slash gods sacrificed their power willingly to create them under Lorcan slash Shazar's instruction. 
So it boils down to elves think Lorcan is a bad guy and a liar, and men think he is a good, honest guy. This generally results in most elven cultures falling in line with more Anuic beliefs, whereas men generally fall in line with more Padomaic beliefs. Another way you can help characterize the terms Anuic and Padomaic is essentially anti-Mundus or pro-Mundus. You see, mortals who see Mundus as a good thing, a gift, see Lorcan as an honest and good spirit, a creator, and they are usually the races of man, and would fall within the definition of Padomaic, as it was Lorcan, the soul of Sithis, who was the soul of Padome, that either tricked or persuaded the Etata to create the realm of Mundus. But on the other hand, we have the Anuic mortals, usually the races of elves, who see Lorcan as a trickster who has essentially entrapped them within Mundus. They see their mortality as a prison, and they would ultimately desire to be spirits in Aetherius, as they were before creation. You should now be getting a good feel for the Anuic vs Padomaic, Myrrh vs Man dynamic here. Ultimately, to summarize before we move on, elves are generally Anuic, anti Mundus, and anti Lorcan, whereas men are generally Padomaic, pro Mundus, and pro Lorcan. But why is that? What led to such conclusions? Well, the strongest of the spirits who helped with creation became the Aedra, but there were many weaker spirits. Some became the Earth Bones, but the others that remained became the Elnafei, spirits so devoid of power that they now had to physically procreate, and they became the biological, physical beings that we know today. This time of creation, the end of the Dawn Era, was still very chaotic. The Elnafe became split into two camps. There were those who found the land of Aldmeris, a place of order and calm in the chaotic birthing of Nern, and there were those who were exposed to all the change, becoming disoriented. The old Elnafe were those who were on Aldmeris, and who would later become the races of elves, and the wandering Elnafe were those who were outside of Aldmeris, and they became the races of man. Reflected in this are the very characteristics of Anuic and Padomaic. The elves were born of the old Elnafe who lived in a place of order and calm, and the men were born of the wandering Elnafe who struggled through the chaotic changes of an early Nern. So this, ladies and gentlemen, is where the line is drawn in the sand. As we all know too well, time goes by, history is created, and once homogenous cultures divide and evolve in all different directions. The races of Bosma, Ultima, Dunma, Orsma, and even races such as the Dwemer and Falma can all trace their lineage back to the Oldma of Aldmeris. Now, for the most part, these derivative elven races have kept to the more Anuic values, seeking order and defining Lorcan as a traitor who trapped them in this mortal prison, but there is one exception, the Dunma, and before them, the Kaima. As a general rule, the Aedra would be considered more Anuic, embodying Anu's sphere, whereas the Daedra are generally more Padomaic, embodying Padome's sphere of chaos. So it would make a lot of sense that when the followers of the prophet Veloth, who would become known as the Kaima, switched worship from Aedra to Daedra, specifically Azura, Mephala, and Boethia, that their culture inherently would become more Padomaic. I will talk a little later about the Dunma, but I do want to note here that while there is a general sense of Anuic and Padomaic that usually align with the definitions of Aedra and Daedra, it does not mean that if a culture worships Aedra, they are Anuic, and vice versa. Prime examples exist within most races of men who worship the Eight Divines, or other variations of the Aedra. However, they are considered Padomaic, in that they do not see Lorcan as a traitor, and they love the creation of Mundus. But there are exceptions to the rule, like with most things, and this time in the form of the Red Guards. But I will talk about the Dunma and Red Guards as exceptions to the trends of Man and Mer soon. So while these terms Anuic and Padomaic seem rather vague, I personally find it more helpful to think in terms of anti-creation, those who think Mundus is a prison, versus procreation, those who think of Mundus as a gift from the gods. To exemplify this point more, we can boil it down to Trinimac versus Lorcan, or Oriel versus Lorcan, but Trinimac is mentioned as doing lots of the groundwork and being very vocal and anti Lorcan. Actually, it is said that Boethia ate Trinimac in part for his so called slanderous words against Lorcan. Regardless, whether you believe more like Boethia or Trinimac, you should now have a really good feel for the terms of Anuic and Padomaic and what they represent. 
So let's deal with the exceptions. Interestingly, the dark-skinned races of Elf and Man, the Dunmer and the Redguards, both deny the trends of their respective Mer or Man brethren. So like I was saying about the Dunmer, they began as the Kaima, a group that followed the Prophet Veloth and took his teachings to heart. Through his teachings, the Kaima learnt the ways of the good Daedra, Azura, Mafala, and Boethia, and also the basis of all future Dunma philosophy. The Sijic endeavor, the path which the Dunma follow, is the idea of transcendence. The Dunma see Mundus as a test, and Lorcan as the teacher. They wish to endure, to strive for what is essentially Kim, the way to break free of Mundus through enlightenment. They embrace creation's conditions and their existence as mortals, hence Padomaic. Rather than seeing Mundus and mortality as a prison, they see it as an opportunity for growth, and this is why the Kaima had to break off, go to Morrowind, and become the Dunma, a group of elves vastly different from the other Myrrh of Tamriel. Now, most races of men see their existence as a labor of love. They see the Aedra as those who sacrificed parts of themselves to become mothers and fathers, a project proposed to them by Shazar, the Nedic name for Lorcan. But across the seas, in the dry arid land of Yakuta, are the Red Guards, who have completely different perceptions of the world. And through these perceptions, they would be considered far more Anuic, as they resent the condition of the mortal realm and long for the far shores. I will give you the simplest form of Yakutan mythology I can, enough to get across how they are considered Anuic. You see, their version of Anu and Padome is personified by Satakal, the world skin, a snake that constantly eats itself and sheds its skin and is born again, aka the Universal Cycles, or Kalpas as they are called. Tall Papa, aka Yakutan version of Akatosh, was the first god to figure out how to survive the cycles via a technique called walkabout. He taught the other spirits how to do the same, using the walkabout to reach a place that became known as the Far Shores, where they could be safe until the new skin of the serpent was born. Tall Papa created Sep, aka Lorcan, from the skins of the past worlds, as a servant. But being made from the remains of Satakal, he was driven mad by hunger and tricked many spirits into an alternative to the walkabout, an easier way, a new world. Essentially, Mundus. Those spirits became mortals and now have to try and reach the far shores, striving to be their spirit forms once again. This in ways mirrors the elven stories of Lorcan, in the way that Lorcan tricked and entrapped the spirits as mortals, hence why the Yakutans in belief are considered more Anuic, like most elves. So we all know that most elves are Anuic, with the exception of the Padomaic Dunma, and we know that most men are Padomaic, with the exception of the Anuic Redguards. So what gives? Man versus Elf. Who is right? Well, despite the initial premise of the video, we aren't really here to debate the merits of biology and the race's abilities, more so their spirituality, perceptions, and philosophy. And while most elves and most men fall on their respective sides of Anuic and Padomaic, I think what this age-old argument is really about is about the nature of creation. So on a philosophical level, it isn't really elves versus man as much as it is Anuic versus Padomaic. So that begs the next question. Which is it? Who is right? Who is more just in their perception? Well, that, ladies and gentlemen, is an incredibly hard question to answer. I would implore you to check out our video on the Complete Guide to Gods, which is a huge video that goes into all the need-to-know details and about the power of worship in the Elder Scrolls universe, but what it ultimately comes down to is that it could be both. Men and Mer could both be right and equally valid through the complex mechanics of power through worship and dragon breaks, as well as Kim and other stranger concepts. Sovngarde is a real place in the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. Does that mean Shaw is the correct version? Well then perhaps the Padomaic races of man are more correct in their perception of Lorcan. But then again, the Far Shores are real, a place you can go in the Elder Scrolls Online. So does that mean then that the Anuic Redguards are more correct in their perceptions about Sep, aka Lorcan, and that he is an evil trickster? It seems rather contradictory, doesn't it? You see, this is why ultimately Man vs. Mer, Padomaic vs. Anuic is actually such a compelling conflict. There is no clear answer. You can easily see the Thalmor's ultimate intention to undo all of creation as the ultimate evil, but from their point of view, 
They seek to return to a state of peaceful order as immortal spirits before Lorcan wrongly tricked them. And on the other hand, you can see why the Stormcloaks would want to be rid of all the elves and reinforce the reality of Mundus, because the way they see it, Shaw, aka Lorcan, with the other Aedra made the mortal world out of love, and they want to protect this gift. At the end of it all, you have to come to your own conclusions, and I personally like to do this through role-playing different characters. Sometimes I play a character in Skyrim that is a Thalmor agent, hell-bent on seeing through the plan to destroy the towers, or perhaps I play a character like Vivex Faithful and seek to follow in his footsteps, seeking to achieve Kim. There are many different philosophies and perceptions in the Elder Scrolls universe, all of which are quite valid. I think for me, on a personal level, I do enjoy the Sijic endeavor, the Dunma philosophy seeing mortality as a challenge, a means of achieving enlightenment, a way to suffer, which will then lead to creating a greater spirit, a greater understanding. So I guess I would be more of the Padamaic persuasion, but how about you guys? What do you guys consider yourself? If you were in the Elder Scrolls universe, would you be man or elf, Anuic or Padamaic? Let me know in the comments down below. Thanks so much for watching guys. I hope I've helped you understand the Elder Scrolls universe a little bit better today. And hopefully you come away from this video with some new things to think about. Thanks again for watching, subscribe for more Elder Scrolls content, and please do like the video if you did enjoy it. My name is Scott from Fudge Muppet, social media links are in the description, along with a whole host of videos that are very useful for understanding the Elder Scrolls universe, and I'll be back to nerd out with you again next time.